Buffalo. Hello, Surge. Hey, how's it going, man? What the fuck is going on, dude? Man, we just got done blasting uh, Necrophagia Moribundus Grim. And, fuck uh, yeah. Hell yeah, man. Before that, we did some self-god, dude. Sacrifice them to the gods. Fucking awesome. Fucking badass fucking shit, man. So fucking badass, dude. Thank what, you, bro. You're welcome, man. So so what the fuck is going on, man? What, what have you been doing, man? Uh, I just got home from tour. Just had like a couple days to chill out. Uh, today, I'm just having a beer, listening to some Kiss right now, you know, hanging out Friday night. Hell yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, kiss, man. What? what <laughs> hell yeah, dude. What? 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 Kiss are you listening to, man? Right now, the Creatures of the Night album's on. So that's a bad fucking up. record, dude. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah, man. So, so tell us. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, obviously, I'm gonna get into Necrophagia, but I do want to ask you about Self God, man. Like, like, how did that get started, man? Well, uh, well, after Necrophagia, I had this little project called Autumn, and after that kind of dissolved, I had all the material for Autumn and Necrophagia, and that kind of gave birth to Self God. Plus, I wrote some stuff for that as well. So after Autumn dissolved, I kind of went to Self God, like, like a few weeks later, you know. It's been like three years going strong. Hell yeah, man! That fucking record's badass, dude. And and you, you thank you. You kind of started it off sort of like as a one man band, correct? Yeah, I mean, it pretty much was just me and uh, you know doing all the guitars, vocals, and everything. Then I got Scotty from Morbid Angel to do drums on it. That was pretty much just two people on that album. And then you just now got you just now got done doing a tour with that band yeah yep hell yeah man how was the reception on the tour man oh uh, man the tour has been awesome i'm pretty much already missing it, it was such a good time uh, it was good to see everybody uh old friends new friends yeah it, it was a good time hell yeah so going to necrophagia man i know you uh you joined the band in uh 2016 correct yes so tell us about that. Like, how did you? How did you? Uh, how did you get hooked up with that band? So it was a pretty cool story. So at the time, I was playing with like this local band in Pittsburgh called Dreadeth, and we happened to open up for this Norwegian black metal band that was coming through uh, called Take. And apparently, Killjoy from Necrophagia just happened to be at the show that night, and he walked up to me, and when I was like the merciful doing all that and he was like praising me on the drums and i'm like wait a minute you're fucking killjoy from necrophasia dude what the fuck is up so next thing you know we exchanged phone numbers and he had a little side project at the time called hacks and and he was looking for a drummer at the time i was doing drums for that dreadeth band and uh yeah so next thing you know, I was doing drums for a side project called Hacks, and we did an album on Hell's Headbangers Records. It's all like Aleister Crowley themed and whatever. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, that happened. And then one day I just get the phone call and he's like, hey, we got rid of our guitar player. We have a festival to do in two weeks. Can you do it? And I was like, fuck yeah, I can do it. So I had to learn like the entire fucking catalog and you know go play a fest in like two weeks and you know the rest is history hell yeah man what what was it like fucking jamming out with killjoy man rest in peace by the way i mean it was a pleasure man it was wild because like i grew up on that i was like one of the biggest fans ever so to me like to be in the band and just to see like you know my idol there was just surreal it was just like it's like why how am i here it's like how did i how how did i end up here you know what i mean it's like winning some like golden ticket type shit you know it's pretty cool he was quite a correct character too huh oh yeah i mean he was funny i mean me and him were we were so good together i mean everybody that line up at the time it was just nothing but cracking jokes and you know having a good time it was all fun oh yeah 
So this new record that you guys have coming out, like, uh, how did this whole thing come about, man? I mean, a lot of that is the demos for the album we were working on uh, when Killjoy was alive. You know, we were working on the record for like two years or something like that. And we had like, I don't know, like 15 songs or something. Some of those songs ended up, you know, he, he only recorded vocals for some. So the rest of the material was pretty much with all vocals, which some of it ended up on on uh, a self god album and uh some of the uh, one of the other guys from the band used it for his solo thing so it was kind of like whatever was left over that had killjoy we were kind of trying to get out you know just to preserve his legacy i think it's very important that people you know still remember and he still has new stuff that you know people haven't heard i think it's very important to get that out considering you know he wanted this out and he named the record Moribundus Grimm. That was his title. You know, I'm just carrying out his messages, you know. And back when, you know, he was alive, he was telling me, this is what I want. I want this. I want that. So I'm just trying to do what he pretty much envisioned when he was alive. Obviously, he was never able to finish it. So, you know, had to finish it in, in the way that I think he would like, you know, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, man, and uh, John from Incantation is he is he uh, is he doing the vocals on the songs that that didn't have them? So yeah, the main title track, More Abundance Grim, Killjoy originally wrote all the lyrics for that, and he only recorded the chorus. Oh, so yeah, we recruited John, who was a great fan of Kill, a uh, great friend of Killjoy's, and you know, friend of ours, and. I thought that was the best person that we could possibly have. And I'm sure Killjoy would love that very much considering he always praised John and Incantation and we were supposed to tour with them. And it was always, you know, just like compliments after compliments. So, you know, it made perfect sense to get John and, you know, John's a good friend and he's a great, you know, vocalist, guitarist, all around dude, you know, and, it was yeah, it's just a pleasure to have him on board. Well, he he fucking kills it, man. Because I didn't even, I couldn't even tell the difference. Like I thought it was, I thought that was yeah, Killjoy. right. Yeah, it, it kind of becomes confusing. Yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> That's crazy because Killjoy had such a unique voice too. But like he he definitely fucking nails it, man. Yeah, when I was listening to it, I didn't, I didn't even see that. Right, and John usually in an incantation he does like the very lows, you know, mm -hmm. and this is like the opposite of what he does. So I was like, wow, this dude could do everything, you know. That's fucking awesome, man. Are, are you yeah. are you guys planning on uh, doing any live shows with this? No, there's not going to be any live shows. It's just like the record we're putting it out, and you know we're gonna like close the chapter, you know, the right way, and. I don't think the band could really go on without Killjoy, so I think it's best to, you know, just... I think leave on this high note with this record, you know, with Killjoy being on it. I think that's the best way. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, I, I remember I remember one day I was, I, was, I was in a record store a long fucking time ago, many, many years ago, and I was just shuffling through shit, and uh, in the DVD section, they had a Necrophagia DVD in there, and I grabbed it. Hell yeah. Because it had, it had a cool cover, but I remember seeing on the back, it said something about Phil Anselmo, and I was like, what the fuck? Yep. And I went home and watched it, and that that was some fucking crazy shit, dude. Like <laughs> they're in the cemetery, they're fucking like throwing up all over the place, and it's just yep. Like, I was like, what the fuck is this? Why does not? It's beautiful. How, how does not like everybody know about this? Like this. Yeah. Funny thing is, I watched that shit when I was in like middle school, so that's how far back I go with that band, like. I remember being a little kid and getting like the Guitar World magazine, and it was like, "Oh, Phil and Selmo's in this one band called Necrophagia," and I'm like, "Who is this?" You know? Yeah. And then I checked out that DVD, and it's like, "Oh shit!" You know? It's yeah, it's downhill ever since, you know. And he was playing in guitar a good way. too, which was which was different. 
Right. So whenever I was in the band, I had to play a lot of his guitar parts, you know, for some songs. So that was interesting. That's cool as hell, man. That is cool oh, yeah. as hell. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, yeah, I, I went down the wormhole and checked out everything about him and, and, and looked them all up and, and all that stuff. And it was just like, fuck, man, this is an amazing band, dude. Like, it's crazy that they're, you know, that they never, uh, very underrated, in my opinion, like, fucking oh yeah you know in the world of death metal like this is definitely some fucking serious fucking shit man yeah i mean it's one of the first up there with death and possessed i mean i wasn't even alive yet but you know killjoy definitely started that shit and you know he inspired black metal i mean uh mayhem's death crush is dedicated to killjoy so <laughs> oh yeah dude it, it goes pretty deep man Fucking legends, man. Dude's fucking legendary. I, I couldn't. I still can't believe I was in the band with him sometimes. It's like, wow, that happened, you know? Well, uh, tell, tell us about your, about yourself, man. Like, like when you were growing up, what were some of the influences that got you into playing guitar and making music and doing what you do? I mean, it's pretty much been Kiss, you know, since I was a little fucking kid. I don't know, like elementary school. My parents, I mean, my mom was a metalhead. So I grew up with like the 80s stuff, you know, like uh, Judas Priest, Kiss, Ozzy Osbourne, Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Van Halen, you know, that was all part of my upbringing. Yeah. So, you know, like the classic shit, the 70s, 80s bands, definitely Kiss and Motorhead. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, Ace from Kiss is one of my all-time favorite guitarists tony iomi eddie van halen randy rhodes i mean it just goes on and on judas priest huge influence and then you know from there you go to thrash metal and extreme metal and so on fuck yeah man well, for all the gearheads out there listening, man, tell, t can you tell us, uh, give us a rundown of like some of the stuff that you're using to get your sounds, man? So currently for Soft God, uh, I'm uh, using Dean Guitars, who I'm proudly endorsed by, uh, Angle Amps, same thing, Fishman Fluence Pickups, uh, DR Strings, and in tune guitar picks those are all my endorsers and i'm very proud to be on the roster and you know uh, be proud of using them i've been using it for years even before i was endorsed so it's like whatever i wanted i ended up with sort of thing Hell yeah. and yeah i just got all my gear back home and it's still working so that's all that matters you know fuck yeah man Dude, I remember when you first hit me up for uh, for PR, and I saw a picture of you with that fucking with that Razorback V, and I was like, Dude, right. that, that fucking guitar, man! I love that guitar, man! I, I remember seeing that in a in a in a guitar center years ago, man. There was a white one with the black fucking right. uh, pinstripes on the sides. I wanted that thing so fucking bad, dude, but it was gone like the next time I went back and I was like, motherfucker. No. Yeah, the crazy thing about that one is I bought that back when I was in high school. This was like 16 years ago or something. They were something. cheap back then. Yeah, dude, I paid like 700 something. Yeah, yeah. It was wild. Yeah, yeah. Now now they're like fucking going for like several grand, thousand man. something. Yeah, Ridiculous. it's like wild. Yeah, I mean, I retired that guitar. I just got a couple new ones from Dean, so that's kind of like staying at home. It's just like, it's so beat up for multi years of touring and gigging, whatever, you know. That's so bad, it's that, like, I want to preserve it. That's badass that you're endorsed by fucking Dean, though, man. Like, well, how, how did that come yeah, about? Yeah, that, that's a dream come true. I remember being like 15 years old in high school, having a, my first Dean and being like, oh, I wish I could you know be endorsed one day so basically how that came about is uh i was endorsed by another company who i'm not gonna name right now and things weren't really working out so i started reaching out to a few and yeah dean were just like right on board from the start you know chris canella shout out 
He's a cool fucking dude. Played for Deicide at yeah. the time. Yeah. And he was like instantly, you know, trying to hook me up. So I was like, fuck yeah. I mean, Dean's been one of my favorite companies since, you know, I was in high school basically. So I was like, of course. So it just made perfect sense, you know, and I'm thankful to be on board. Hell yeah. Got a question for you from the chat room. Uh, 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 Carl wants to know, how many instruments do you tamper with? Well, so I play drums, guitar, do vocals, bass, and I do a little bit of keys. That's so you, about it. So you play the, you play actual real drums on that shit. It's not, not, it's not a drum machine. Well, that's Scott from Morbid Angel from uh, uh, on the on the record on the Self God record. Okay. So yeah, that's that's a real drummer, crazy motherfucker on drums. Hell yeah, that is, that's fucking cool too, man. Like, what the fuck? Yes, yeah, yeah. Morbid Angel, shout out, good friends of mine, Scotty, uh, everybody, you know, Trey, me and him talk all the time. Love those dudes. So it was a pleasure to, you know, have them on, well, Scotty on board. It was very cool. Well, looking back so far on your career, man, what are some of the, uh, what are some fucked up crazy moments that you, that you can think of that maybe not everybody knows about? Is, is there anything that you've seen that, that, uh, that you can share like, legally? Like. <laughs> like crazy moments on tour yeah yeah something fucked up man something that i mean shit we in europe we almost had our bus catch on fire one time uh remember the electrical system just started lighting up uh i got in a fight in germany that happened uh what else okay. i mean there's always something wait 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 why why did you get in a fight some dude just attacked me it was like some crazy shit some drunk dude it was it was wild yeah, them but yeah it was you know shit happens people i mean even on this last tour we had some guy threaten us at a bar you know but luckily nothing happened you know when you when you travel you run into all sorts of things i mean on this tour we had some dude back up into our bus while we were in it like getting ready like so you know it's like shaking we're like what the fuck happened we got outside, some dude backed into us. <laughs> then our brakes started smoking the the one day, one of the days on the road. You know, they started catching on fire, so we had to pull over. I don't know, it's all kinds of shit, man. There's something every tour. Another question from the chat room. Leo from uh, Lisbon, Portugal. He wants to know what con Ooh. what country did you enjoy most performing in? I mean, I would love to play in Portugal. That's definitely on the bucket list. I mean, I, I, it's it's hard to like pick one country, but I, I've played in like thirteen countries or so by now. Uh, I would say, I mean, some spots in Germany were really good. Poland was one of the best. Hungary, Italy. It's it. I mean, it's like all over the map, man. You know, I mean, in, in, in the UK, we had some great shows, like in London, we had like a crazy fucking show. I mean, the US too, you know, pick a city. There's, there's a lot of places. Where do, where does it seem like the metalheads are like the most insane? I would say Europe. Uh, it's not like how it is in the US. It's a lot more dedicated and there's a lot more people coming out. You know, a lot of people supporting more. Yeah, they, and there's, I mean, the festivals, I'm sure you've seen the lineups they have for like Vakken or and Flamin Fest, whatever. It's just insane every year, you know. All we got is like Maryland Death Fest, maybe, you know. So America has to step it up a little bit. Hey, man, we got Tennessee Metal Devastation Music Fest, man. Come on. Well, shit, if, <laughs> if you want to have self guy, man, would love to play it. You hell, know? hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. I would love to, man. Fuck yeah. yeah. I'll have my people talk to your people, man. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, everybody I talk to, uh, they always tell me that Europe is just crazy as far as, like, they they buy shit, man. Like, they, they buy CDs. Oh, they, yeah. They buy tapes. They buy patches. Anything, you know? And uh, that's Yeah, we would sell, like, close to 100 shirts a day. It was, like, that crazy, I remember. 
in Europe. It's like, wow. You know, I'd hope to sell that in a single tour in the U.S. Sometimes, you know, it's well, like. <laughs> well, I, I do got to say, though, you know, of all the bands that play at our festival here in Tennessee, man, they do sell a lot of fucking merch. And like, that's one thing they're always telling me, like, just like, I don't know, like, I I think half the bands probably make more money at the fest than I do, man, because it's just... Oh, good. Yeah, like, people around here, because they're starving for it, you know? Like, there's nothing like that around here in this area that ever happens except for this. So, you know, like, they just fucking go ape shit, man, and... I mean, yeah, we just played in Tennessee, like, last week or something. Where at? Uh, we were in Knoxville. Oh, hell yeah, man. Yeah, we got a lot of friends out there, too. The summoner, yeah, yeah. summoner circle and uh Yeah, Herb Herb came out, so shout out to Summoner Circle. Fuck yeah. It was we got to party a little bit good times. Yeah, those guys are good, man. Yeah, sick band. That'd be a cool band for you guys for you to tour with, man. Yeah, we talked about it, you know, maybe one day we can uh arrange something. Hell yeah. All right. Well, uh, what else? What what kind of stuff do you have coming up next, man? Any, anything you want to announce to the people? Uh, so basically, in a couple months, uh, probably like August, we're going back out on the road and we're doing doing the East Coast. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the West Coast because we just did the East Coast. So we're going all the way from Pennsylvania to California, down to Arizona to Texas to Florida, and everything in between. So. We're definitely doing a few more weeks, and we're, you know, doing the whole country this year, basically. So, yeah, be on the lookout for tour dates. Fucking badass, man. Well, uh... Oh, yeah. All right, dude. Well, I, I guess I'm about out of questions for you, man. Is uh, Can I get you to make us a station tag? Uh, Like, w what is that? Whenever you're ready, say something like, this is Surge from Necrophagia and Self God, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. This is Surge from Necrophagia and Self God, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Fuck yeah, man. Get your pool. <laughs> yeah, get your pool. <laughs> Dime bag. Fuck yeah. Shout out to Pantera. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. I also, I wanted to add, uh, for anybody out there listening, where do they go to support you the best? Where is the best place to go to buy merch, buy CDs, whatever? Uh, so, for Necrophagia, we have Facebook, Necrophagia Official. Uh, the merch is through, and the new records, through Time to Kill Records. Uh, they have a Facebook, Instagram. Look them up. For Self God, it's uh, Self God Band. At Facebook and at Instagram and selfgod.bandcamp.com for merch. Awesome. Awesome. Right on, dude. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us, man. I really appreciate it, dude. Fuck yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, it's man. been a pleasure. Anytime, dude. Fuck yeah. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to blast some more necrophagia for these motherfuckers and then go crazy, all right? Hell yeah. Rest in peace. Kill joy. Gore forever. Fuck yeah, man. We'll talk to you later, brother. Later, man. Cheers. Peace out. There you have it, folks. Surge from Self God and Necrophagia live on the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation fucking radio. Like I said earlier, put your speakers in your fucking windows. Put them in your front lawns. Put them in your neighbor's driveway. Do whatever you got to do, man. If you don't see U-Haul trucks everywhere tomorrow... Why the fuck are you even on the internet, man? Why the fuck are you even here, dude? Like, seriously, crank it the fuck up loud as a fuck. This is fucking necrophagia, man.